<laughs> well, uh, a, a person who strongly believes in uh, functionalism, uh, such as Hilary Putnam, just to, to put an example, uh, would say, well, it looks like we have this huge prejudice. Uh, we tend to think that, well, animals have um, something special going on for them. Why, if, if you're so keen to sort of try to shun speciesism, <laughs> why wouldn't you shun sort of a carbonism and, and say, well, maybe silicon computers can also feel? You know, it's, it's, it's analogous, uh, this idea, if life exists, primordial life exists elsewhere in the universe, will it be carbon-based? Uh, to say yes sounds like some form of arbitrary uh, carbon chauvinism, but a more accurate description would be microfunctionalism. It seems that the, the, the valence properties of carbon are functionally unique, the, uh, the quantum mechanical properties of liquid water as a solvent are unique and so it is highly likely, uh, many astrobiologists would, 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 like, would, would now say, and quite possibly inevitable, that primordial life that does evolve elsewhere will be carbon-based. And so if you look now at the question of, uh, of, of sentience, what grounds have we for thinking that uh, organic robots uh, can uh, are conscious, but not silicon and other other substrates, as they're question bakingly uh, called. Um, it would seem, on the face of it, extremely arbitrary, and certainly, in so far as one conceptualizes mind in terms of of, of, of logical mathematical inference, um, then substrate does seem to be uh, irrelevant. But if you actually look at the binding problem and what it is uh, that enables somehow uh, uh, organic minds to bind uh, distributive, apparently distributively processed features into unitary perceptual objects apprehended or instantiated by a unitary self. It is much less clear uh, w uh, which uh, features of the mind-brain are actually functionally uh, relevant and not. And uh, uh, at, at first blush, I mean, why aren't 80 billion uh, odd uh, quasi uh, classical discrete interconnected nerve cells akin to the population of, of China? However, interconnected the population of China is, there's no way, however, they arrange themselves that they are going to generate a unitary subject of experience. Or rather, if somehow a unitary subject of experience were created by 1.3 billion Chinese people holding hands or doing something, it would be unexplained. It would be a failure of reductive physicalism. Now, why isn't this the case uh, uh, with uh, awake or dreaming human brains that aren't in a, uh, a dreamless uh, 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 sleep? Now, I would actually invoke uh, a quantum mind explanation that I think to solve the so-called hard problem of consciousness and to close Levine's, uh, yes, Levine's uh, explanatory gap, one needs to combine Strawsonian physicalism, this is the idea that at the most fundamental level the fire in the equations uh, may actually be fields of, of microqualia, to combine this very daring uh, metaphysical uh, hypothesis with uh, some form of, of quantum coherence. This is very, very uh, uh, speculative and we won't go into details now, but I just wanted to allude to the fact that skeptics about the possibility of digital, uh, non-trivial digital consciousness and not uh, purely arbitrary uh, uh, carbon chauvinists, that there are substantive grounds for doubting that a classical digital computer it's serial processors or a, 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 a connectionist uh, neural net, a so-called neural network, with a purely classical, uh, a classical parallelism, could ever generate a, a unitary mind.